Hi, I'm Colonel Nicole Mann. I'm Dr. Chow Lingering. We're here today to show you a tour of our home in space, the International Space Station. This was my home for 157 days. And Chell, you spent even more time on station. Yeah, 311 days total. And we got to spend about a week of that time together. Living on the space station is really one of the most incredible experiences. So we're excited to show you our place in space. Welcome to station. The International Space Station is a microgravity laboratory, 250 miles above the Earth and flying at 17,500 miles per hour. That means we orbit the planet once every 90 minutes. The first time you see station, it's just breathtaking. You can't believe that you've actually left planet Earth and you're floating in space. Then suddenly those solar arrays come into view and you can see just how massive it is. We're starting in the European Space Agency's Columbus module and you can see I'm actually on the ham radio communicating with students on the ground. This module houses a lot of our experiments and I think our favorite one, casting that pink glow from the right, is the veggie enclosure where we get to grow vegetables. Yeah, in fact, we grew dwarf tomatoes while we were on board. Well, you got to harvest the tomatoes. We actually planted those. Okay, you started it, but we cultivated those little guys. That's true. Uh, okay, it was, a joint, it was a joint effort. <laughs> Now we're making our way across the front of Node 2 and into uh, the Japanese experiment module called Kibo. Kibo is a great module where we execute a ton of science. We have a freezer in there called Melfi, a lot of the experiments with flames and different types. Oh, hey, there goes Samantha floating by. <laughs> that floating never gets old. Uh, we're looking at different types of flames, uh, different types of metal components in there. And now we're coming up here on the airlock. Yeah, and so we're not only doing science inside the space station, but also outside. And that airlock gives us the opportunity to actually um, put equipment and experiments on the outside of the space station as well. And so we just took a U-turn here. Now we're um, floating starboard to the right side of the space station. Uh, and we're going to, as we go into node two here, on the left is actually, Nicole, where your Crew-5 um, Dragon Yeah, we were docked at node is. two forward. That's right. And our Crew-4 spacecraft, is a Freedom, is actually overhead. But we're going to take a hard right here and now look aft towards the back of the space station. We're currently in node two. And uh, you can see, I think that's Frank there on the cycle. But before we go into the lab, we're going to pitch down and look inside one of our crew quarters. And uh, um, one of my crewmates, uh, Jessica Watkins, is, is uh, pretending <laughs> to sleep in there. So our crew quarters in No. 2, we have overhead deck, uh, port and starboard. And so the astronauts will sleep in those compartments. They're about the size of a telephone booth, but pretty comfortable. Yep, yep. Now we're floating into the U.S. lab. This is the primary segment for the U.S. experiment. There is Frank waving. He's on our cycle called Sevis, And we spend about two hours a day working out uh, on the bike, on the treadmill, and also on our exercise re resistance device. That's right. And the lab is kind of the heart and brains of the U.S. segment of the space station. A lot of our avionics, uh, a lot of our experiments um, are housed in there. Now we're passing aft lab into node one. Uh, and so this is the oldest US node on the International Space Station. Um, it houses our gala and you can see our dinner table there. And we're taking a right into node three here. All right, and there you can see Bob Hines running on the treadmill. He's literally running on kind of the side of the wall. And there I am kind of behind him getting out of the way. It looks like it's crowded here, but really because you have three dimensions to use, you can just kind of float around each other, but you still need to get out of the way. Yeah, and I did a poor job of flying there. I got, I got bumped. <laughs> I think by. you bumped him a little uh, bit. Yeah. Um, here's Koichi, he's on the ARED, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. This gives us up to 600 pounds of resistance to maintain bone health, muscle strength, and really keeps us um, fit for a return to the Earth. All right, here is one of our favorite modules, and you can see Samantha here in the cupola. The cupola is a series of windows that look down at our beautiful planet Earth, and photography is used for Earth observation. Sometimes we're taking pictures of uh, weather or uh, you know volcano eruptions. It's used for a lot of different uh, data gathering of our planet. In addition to the science that we do there, it's also, I think, one of our favorite places to oh. just hang out. We'll often see something, aurora, or some just beautiful sights out that window and oftentimes just call the rest of the crew there to, to share in that experience. Absolutely, definitely changes your perspective on the planet. 
Now we're headed here into the airlock. You can see our spacesuits, which we use for a spacewalk or EVA, extravehicular activity. And there's Josh Cassida. He is working on some of our spacesuits, getting them ready for the next spacewalk. Behind Josh's feet is actually the crew lock. When we're not doing EVAs, that is full of stuff. But when we're getting ready to do a spacewalk, that is completely empty. And that's the section that goes down to vacuum. All right, here's lunchtime. You can see Bob and Frank, and they're uh, they're playing with their food. It is definitely um, the best place to play with uh, food when you're in space. You can see there I am overhead or on the ceiling, as we call it, and then Jessica Watkins at the far end. A lot of times we enjoy our meals together, which are a great time Absolutely. for the crew just to to bond, but also to talk about the day, any lessons learned that we have, and and debrief anything that happened. That's right. Now we're making our way into PMA-1. And so this is the connection between the US segment of the space station and the Russian section. And so you can see how it kind of scopes down from our square hatches to these round hatches. And all of these bags surrounding here essentially serve as our pantry. So all of our daily supplies are contained in those bags, um, making a quick access to get new washcloths or, or those sorts of things. You know, this is truly an international space station. And so we have five different space agencies that participate, Japan, Europe, Canada, the US, and Russia. And so this uh, segment here was actually the first component of the space station. It orbited Earth alone for 16 days before Space Shuttle Endeavour arrived and installed the Unity module. It's mainly used for storage now, and you can see that half of the passageway, that whole uh, deck half of the passageway is just chock full of stuff. And if we were on the Earth, this would be almost impossible to navigate. Of course, in space, we're able to float and just float over the top of all of these pieces of equipment. Um, much of this is uh, parts of our waste uh, system, essentially our toilet. And you can see those panels on either side of the view there. There's also panels overhead and down below. So sometimes if you need to get to one of those panels that's underneath, yes, you have to move <laughs> all that cargo out of the way and not let it float away and lose anything. Uh, that's a lot of work. Um, now we're making our, continuing our, our uh, way aft and in the very far, uh, in the background, you can see into the service module. We're gonna make our way in there. We're gonna pass through this node and, uh, and we'll look in those nodes here um, in a little bit. You can see Anya Kinkana there in the background. She was a crew member with me on Crew 5, and she was actually the first cosmonaut to launch on a Dragon spacecraft, and she's running on their treadmill. And, and we're making our way into the service module. So this is really the heart and brains of the Russian uh, segment of the space station. Its, it's design um, and construction is really rooted in the very earliest uh, Russian space stations, and it's pretty self-contained. So you can see Anna is here exercising. They have their um, command panel for emergencies, their crew quarters, their toilet, a lot of their science is all housed in this, uh, in this module. You can also see that there's a quite a few windows on the deck portion of this segment and a lot of cameras. This is one of the greatest places for Earth observation, besides the cupola, of course, and we can use a lot of those photographs there for Earth observation. And Anya's uh, exercising right next to the, the Russian segments table, and so um, our crews would generally gather on re weekends to eat together, as, as uh, Nicole described. Um, an opportunity for us to gather together in the Russian segment on Friday nights, and then we would gather in the U.S. segment in the galley on Saturday nights. And um, an opportunity to not only just eat, but to share, um, to commiserate, to celebrate, I think, uh, the same things that we do with food here on the ground. Absolutely, and there's typically seven uh, people on board, three cosmonauts and four astronauts. And so it seems, again, like a small space, but there's really plenty of room for us to uh, gather and enjoy. So now we're pitching downward, down towards the Earth or towards the deck or nadir um, to look into Nayuka or the science module, the new science module on the space station. And, uh, and so, this kind of demonstrates how as you move from module to module, it can kind of be a little disconcerting um, as you are figuring out which way is kind of oriented up in a particular module. And there you can see a cosmonaut, um, Dimitri, he's working in the glove box on some science that he's executing there in a MLM. And this module gave the Russians more room, more capability to do science. There's a, another crew quarters down there, an additional toilet. 
Now we're turning back around to work and to look into one of the docking compartments. And there's Sergey. He's working on the uh, spacesuits on the Russian segment for their EVA. So you can see it's similar to our airlock where there's the uh, spacesuits. He's cleaning out the spacesuit, preparing for their next spacewalk. And again, as we pitched up, now we're looking upward or um, it's hard to keep overhead. track. It yeah, really is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and it, and it is, it's like that when you're floating around, too. You'll come out of a module, and you have to take a moment to figure out, okay, which which direction do I need to go in? And so here we're, we're pulling back, and now we're going to be facing forward again um, and making our way back through the FGB, front, through that functional cargo block and all this area of stowage. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes you enter a module, and it just doesn't look quite right until you you know, orient yourself in the direction you're used to, like now we are, boom. Yep. And your brain just kind of cages. And so we're floating back through the FGB, which would be kind of in a normal upright approach. Uh, but really when you're up there, it doesn't matter. There's no upside down or top or bottom or anything. That's right. You can kind of make any direction you're up. Although um, I think we take orientation cues from one, how the models were situated on the ground when we were training. A lot of the labels and interfaces have orientation. And then I think uh, one other powerful orienting factor is the light. You kind of look for the lights to be on the on the ceiling, on the overhead. Yeah, it's funny how our brains just kind of lock onto that That's a right. little bit. So now we're coming back through PMA-1. Uh, and you can see all of our uh, storage bags that are gonna be kind of surrounding us. And really we call this our pantry. So it's got all of your supplies. So if you run out of uh, toilet paper or tissues or garbage bags or anything like that, they're located kind of in this module here, this segment. And now we're floating back through node one. And so you can see our dinner table here in node one, our galley. And if you look, you can just see the odd orientation of some of the utensils and you can see our hot sauce and spoons are just basically either velcroed or taped um, touching some tape or there's also some food bags there uh, that folks are kind of in between meals or snacks and you do have to be careful if you bump one of those it will float away and sometimes That's it takes absolutely. you a while to find it but it's amazing you just need a little bit of uh, tape that you can stick your spoon to oh there i there am in the are. airlock <laughs> <laughs> i'm showing off uh, you, you know what it's like to to float around and, and work there on the ceiling <laughs> And now we're gonna um, turn back looking forward in the space station. You can see a couple of our cameras just Velcroed to the wall there, um, very easy to stow stuff. And as we make our way back through the lab, you can see um, Jessica is on our, our simulator, our robotic arm simulator. And so some we do robotic arm operations either during spacewalks or during cargo vehicle captures. And we need to practice, we need to keep our skills up. And so uh, Jessica's demonstrating how that works. You can see Bob here, he's grabbing a camera and he's gonna look down through another window that we have, which is called WARF, that's used for a lot of scientific uh, research and investigation of our planet. And it's really amazing when you look down through this window, because we're traveling so fast, 17,500 miles an hour, to really get a zoomed in photograph of the Earth, you actually have to move and track the planet, otherwise it's gonna be blurry. That's right, and you can see how we have to hold ourselves down. So. Um, Bob has tucked his legs underneath the bungees there, and and uh, and so we have to be very intentional about the stuff that we're handling. Uh, either we have to stick it to the wall on Velcro, tuck things under under bungees, or else uh, it's going to float away. And as we as we go through here, I think you probably noticed just how maybe messy the space station looks. Um, it is a functional, uh, constantly changing environment, and it's got wires and cables and and uh, and it looks it looks kind of messy. It does, but it's controlled chaos. It really is. I mean, Good. there's and there's folks on the ground that really keep track of where all of our, our bags are and all the equipment is so that we don't lose anything. And you know, I mentioned that we have normally seven people on board, but we've seen a lot of people here during this tour. We in fact have 11 people on board at this time because we're doing a crew handover. So crew uh, four and crew five, both of those dragons are attached, making the 11 people. That's right. And so uh, crew four, my crew has been up there for almost six months at this point. You all docked maybe four or five days Just a couple prior days this, ago. Right? We were still figuring out how to yeah. float around. And this is our time where we're just kind of handing over our lessons learned and the state of the space station to you all as you prepare to take over. And now we're making our way through PMA-3. And this is where the Crew-4 uh, Dragon Freedom is docked. And, uh, and during the last part, during this handover time, I actually got to stay in Freedom as my crew quarters, which was absolutely amazing. 
I think the best part about being in a dragon is the windows, right? You're I mean, it, right. it is, uh, talk about the penthouse uh, penthouse suite. When you're sleeping there and you wake up, you can take that, that shade down and you'll just have a beautiful, beautiful view of our planet. Yeah, and I think that that is, we all agree that this is one of um, the most amazing uh, opportunities that we have when we're living in space is that opportunity to look out the window at any given moment and to look back at, um, look back from our temporary home on the space station to humanity's home, uh, the absolutely beautiful planet Earth.